We're going to be discussing a man named Christian Longo. This is a family annihilator who murdered his wife and his three kids. Christian was said to be a good husband. He was said to be very doting and attentive. He was the type of husband that made all the other husbands not look quite so good. He'd buy her whatever she wanted and he treated her like a princess. But he was living well above his means. He was spending money that he simply did not have. So he's maxing out credit cards. He is drowning in debt. And all the while he's stealing money wherever he can so that he can make payments on um, their rent so they don't lose a place to live. So they still have a roof over their head. So he's doing all this while keeping a straight face, acting like nothing is wrong to everyone around him. Mary Jane decided that she wasn't gonna work anymore so she could stay home and take care of the kids. So because of that, now Christian has to work even harder, but I'm sure he made her feel like it was no big deal that she quit working because they were rolling in the Benjamins, but in reality, that's just adding more stress to him. So Christian, who had switched jobs by this point, he started working for a newspaper company, had decided, you know, this has been great, but I'm really not making as much money as I'd like to be, and I kind of like to be my own boss. So he decided to branch out, quit his job, and try starting his own business so he could kind of create his own wealth. He could be the boss. He could be the person taking the biggest piece of the pie. And he started a cleaning business, and to everyone from the outside, it seemed like it was going really well, like business was profitable. He was definitely spending money like he had it. He was buying new cars, going on vacation. This family was not buying generic brand anything. Bagged cereal was not in this family's household. You know what I'm saying? He was even getting investors. His father, his own father, invested a bunch of money into this company, a company that was secretly failing. Nothing was going right. He was just being swallowed by more debt because now he's trying to run his own business and a business takes a lot of money. Like you have to spend money to make money and he didn't have any money to spend. But he was in so deep at this point that he couldn't really do anything about it. So he, to make it seem like things weren't bad, he started spending even more money. It was just like a giant mess. So he starts stealing again. And this time he starts stealing money from his own clients. Now, things do come to a head and his wife, Mary Jane, realizes that something's going on when one day her her husband, their kids, are driving down the road in their brand new van. When they get pulled over by police and Christian gets arrested, because it turns out the van that he's in, he stole it. <laughs> so he gets pulled over, he gets arrested for this. He is somehow, I have no idea how, he's a smooth talker, a fast talker, maybe he had that face, you know, that trustworthy face, I don't know what it was, but he was able to convince them to not make him do any jail time. And he just got probation for forgery and stealing a vehicle, bro, you can't, you can't make this up. But now his wife knew that something was up. She knew he'd been lying to her. She knew that he had been trying to project the perfect life and in doing so had gotten in over his head. And she now knew that he cared more about how things look to the outside than how they actually were in the day to day. So now she knows he's been lying and that has to cause some upset. And he also gets kicked out of the church because of the light being shown on him for essentially being like a, a repeat criminal, right? And the church is very important to them. That's where they met. That's where their love was born. So that was a huge hit to them. And on top of that, now he's on probation and owes even more money because he was given restitution. He has to pay for his crimes. And you know what's sad? This didn't even make him learn, man. Like he shortly after this went right back to his old ways. He opened up another credit card, this one in his father's name, and he ran it up like a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Now that was strained because she was standing by her man, a man that she would soon find out wasn't even faithful to her. Are we surprised? We're not surprised. Apparently Mary Jane had been in his emails. Now why? I don't know. But you know what I would say that snooping in your partner's emails is the lesser evil between that and him being unfaithful and then um, later killing you. So we'll just go with that. But either way, she'd been in his emails and she saw that he had been emailing a woman. And it would be bad enough if he was, you know, just cheating on her, just being unfaithful. But it turns out while speaking to this woman, he was also being very disrespectful to his wife. He was telling this woman that he didn't love her anymore and that after she had their kids, he wasn't as attracted to her as he had been and that she wasn't giving him enough attention because uh, she's busy with your three kids maybe. But this poor woman, man, she confronts him about this. She goes to him and she's like, yo, what the f is this? Probably not that aggressively, but she's like, what is this about? And he straight up told her like, I don't love you anymore. And you're not the same as you were before you were became, before you were became, before you became a mom. She wanted to keep him and she did stay with him because this is what she felt was right morally to her and also due to her religious beliefs. Meanwhile, he's still got his going on. He's still spending money that he doesn't have and making things worse. And he finally decides that, you know what, you know what would be like the best thing, the best option for me and my family right now? We should go and we should go. So he decides he's going to run. He decides he's going to break his probation. He's going to pick up his family and he's going to leave the state and run off to a warehouse in Ohio where they're going to live. 
And police qu quickly realize that he's gone, right? They're like, where'd this go? They realize he's gone. They put out a warrant for his arrest, but by this time he's like, far as sh Because like, Oregon to Ohio, that is, that is not close. <laughs> so this family is living in a warehouse, not a home. They don't have furniture, they don't have a kitchen. They don't, it's just like, it's a, it's a warehouse, right? So he decides he's gonna start stealing money and stealing items to fill this place up, make this warehouse a home. So he starts stealing things and furniture and all this shit. And his plan now is to steal a bunch of stuff that he can then sell so he had enough money to buy a home in Oregon. He's planning to go back to Oregon, but he needs to come here and steal all the shit, sell all the shit, so that he can then go there and take this dirty money and buy a home. Now, police are looking for Christian because there's a warrant out for his arrest. And apparently they find out where he is because Mary Jane's family told them. Now Christian somehow gets word that police are onto him. How? I have no idea, but he does and he runs again. Him and his family literally like pick up what they can carry. They get in yet another stolen van and they drive from Ohio back to Oregon because that must be the last place that police would suspect them, you know? By the time police arrive at this warehouse, the, the family's long gone. They go in and they can tell that they had recently been there, like all of the goods that Christian had bought with like money that wasn't his was still there. So it was clear that they had been there, but the family was gone. And this time, Mary Jane had not told her family where they were going and now her phone was turned off. So it was after this that they reported her and the kids missing. Now this missing persons report wasn't taken very seriously by police and it ended up being taken even less seriously when shortly after this, Mary Jane's family did receive a postcard that was said to have been from Mary Jane and it was from South Dakota. And in it, she was kind of like, yo, sorry I dipped and I didn't say bye and I haven't been calling. I've just been like super busy, I've been on the move a lot. But her family felt weird about this. So they took this to the police, they showed this to the police and the police were like, ah, well, there you go. Case solved. She's not missing. She left on her own. She's having some fun in South Dakota. She's an adult. She's allowed to do that, you know? So they actually closed the missing person's case. They were like, she's not missing. So that was in November. So now we're gonna move on to December. And it was December 19th, 2001, when the body of a young boy was found floating in the Lint Sow River in Oregon. Now, initially the boy was not identified because no missing children that fit that description had been like submitted. Nobody had reported a child missing that fit this description was what I meant to say. Um, so a couple of things started happening at the same time. First, a composite sketch of the boy was put out to the media so that they could bring in any leads. And at the same time, divers were searching this river to see if they could find anything else while searching the river. And both of these things brought in leads to police. Now, one of these things that came in was a woman. This woman worked at Starbucks and she called police and was like, listen, that little boy looks familiar to me. He looks like a four-year-old boy named Zachary, who was the son of my coworker, whose name is Christian. And get this, she tells police that Christian had been super weird with her recently, just days, just, just, just shortly before the bodies were found, okay? She says that Christian had came to her and was kind of like, hey, listen, if you don't see my wife and kids around, um, in the coming days, months, weeks, years, it's because me and my wife are actually getting a divorce and she's already took the kids and left the state. Next, this was a lead that came from the river itself. While diving and searching this river, they found a second body. This was the body of a little girl who had been weighted down to the bottom of the river. This ended up being the body of Zachary's little sister, Sadie. She was only three years old. So now that these two kids have been identified, police realize that they need to like step it up and find Christian because they realize that he has a wife and another child who is only one years old, by the way, a baby. And they realize that these two people, these two, the wife and the baby are also missing along with Christian. So they start searching. They find out where the family had been living. They go to this apartment building. They're not there, but they do see that this apartment building is pretty close to the water and pretty close to some docks that go into the water. So they go and they start searching in that area. And that is when they discover two suitcases. Inside one of the suitcases, they found the couple's baby daughter, Madison, who was only one years old. And in the second suitcase was Mary Jane. Police do initially entertain the possibility that Christian could be a victim himself, right? So they do continue searching to see if his body could be found, but after extensive searches, he wasn't found. So within a month, he was actually put on the FBI's most wanted list, like the top 10 most wanted people by the FBI. And his photo was distributed everywhere. Police were quickly able to tell that Christian was on the run and that he was headed towards the border of the US and Mexico because he had stolen a credit card and was using this stolen credit card to fund 
his run from the police. So they were like tracking each of his purchases and they were following him. But the problem was, is they were always one step behind him because he'd make the purchase and he was gone. By the time they got there, he was no longer there. Now, police do get a tip when they get a call that someone who was believed to be Christian was in Mexico. And since they had seen that that seemed like where he was headed based on the purchases he had been making, they took this tip to be credible. Well, it turns out this was Christian. Christian was in Mexico and he had taken on the identity of a reporter that he had worked with at that newspaper where he worked at before. So it turns out after the murders, he had used a stolen credit card, went to Mexico, and once there, he was living the dream. It was just like a vacation. He was hanging out on the beach, swimming, drinking, spending someone else's money and hanging out with the ladies. Somehow Christian learns that police are on to him again. How he keeps doing this, I don't know. He runs to another part of Mexico, but by this time, like he is hella wanted. He's on the FBI's most wanted list and he's quickly caught and sent back to the US to stand trial. Now, Christian did not admit what actually happened to his family. He actually denied doing it for a very long time altogether. So police had to come up with their own theory about what happened. Police believe that Christian killed his family on the same day that he talked to that coworker from Starbucks, where he said that his family wasn't going to be around anymore. He thinks that, or he thinks they think that he and Mary Jane got into some sort of argument that there was some sort of confrontation, what it could be about. They're not sure. So they got into a fight and that he must have hit her something hard because she did have blunt force trauma and that then he strangled her. After Mary Jane, they believe that it was the one-year-old baby Madison who was killed next. They think that he strangled her, which is just horrifying to think about. It was said that he then put them in the suitcases and then took them and put them in the water before going home and needing to figure out how he's gonna take care of his other two babies. It's said that these two were smothered and that he then put them in his car and went to a bridge where he threw them over the bridge into the water. So uh, he was arrested. I'm not sure if I said that, but he was arrested and get this, he pled guilty to two of the murders, but not guilty to the other two murders. Stay with me here. <laughs> he does the most cowardly thing one can do. And he tells the court that it was his wife. It was his wife who caused all of this. They were like, that is total and after just, it was either just under four hours or just over four hours at about the four hour mark. That's how long they deliberated. And they came back and found him guilty of all four murders. And he was sentenced to death. Christian Longo has tried to appeal. Of course they always do, but it has been a no go. They were like, not nah, you're going to stay in jail. It's going to be a no from me. And as of 2020, he was in the general population in a prison in Oregon. And you remember how I said that for a long time, he claimed that he was innocent. Well, turns out that he finally did admit that he killed his entire family. He actually admitted this to the reporter whose identity he had stolen when he was living in Mexico. Please stay safe and be a better person than you were yesterday. And I hope to see you in my next video.